Hello, ladies in action. It is such a blessing to be with each and every one of you guys today um, here for our afternoon session, how to break new ground using technology. Um, first and foremost, I want to just thank um, Sister Gad and the National Ladies Board for the opportunity to speak to you all today. I am both honored and humbled to bring such a timely topic, um, breaking new ground in technology. Amen. Um, we probably didn't imagine that we'd be doing our ladies conference like this. Um, maybe, you know, it, it surprised all of us and um, definitely has been maybe a tough situation, tough time for us all to be um, indoors and just doing life differently. But God gives us these tools of technology in order for us to continue um, to do the work of his kingdom. Amen. Um, you know, we, we are seeing new ground being broken right now through the first ever virtual National Ladies Conference. And over the past few days, we have seen various mighty women of God come together and share God's word through various means of technology. The Ladies in Action has seen new ground be broken using technology already. And I believe that the church is entering a time in which we will continue to see more of this take place. Originally, um, I was meant to do a lot more behind the scenes work for this conference, um, but I got ill and I was fighting um, coronavirus symptoms for nearly two weeks. Um, but God is a healer. Amen. And praise God, I'm here with you guys today. Um, I'm doing a lot better. So thank you, everyone who prayed and interceded uh, for me during that time. And so here we are. Talk, talking about breaking new ground in technology. We are living in a time in which a session about breaking ground in technology is needed now more than ever. But can I say this to you ladies, to you church, whoever is listening out there, it is not your abilities and your talents and technology that will help in this crucial time for the church. It's your availability to be used and the responsiveness to the needs at hand. Um, I teach a media class at Harvest Bible College, and um, a lot of my notes are coming straight from that, that course, but um, one thing that I, I teach the students there whenever we have our very first class of media and communications is I, I, I ask them uh, very importantly, I said, why do we have such a class at Bible College? Why do we have a class about media and technology and communication? Why does this matter? And what does this have to do with the Bible? Well, the first scripture I take them to is Acts 1.8. It's a familiar scripture, um, probably to us all. But Acts 1.8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. We are called to be witnesses. And I make it clear in media class at Bible school that the, the things that we're learning, the objectives of media and communications and the strategy and the skills, all those things are, are there because it's an effective evangelism tool for the church today. The reason media matters is because the mission matters. If we see the importance of the mission of reaching the lost, then we will see the importance of why we have media ministry in our churches today. If we are called to be witnesses, and that is our mission, technology today helps us achieve that mission more effectively. Um, we can't allow fear of uncharted waters to set into us when it comes to the tools that God has given us to reach the lost. Today, we are facing a pandemic, and for a lot of us, there has been so many uncharted waters as far as how to do ministry and, you know, how can we effectively reach the lost in this time? Well, God has given us amazing tools and technology that do require us to learn, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. 
Um, before this pandemic, perhaps many of our churches saw media ministry as perhaps a nice added bonus, um, something that maybe we'll get to eventually, but it's not necessarily needed. Oh, but how quickly have we turned to it now, not just for outreach, but as it means to keep the church connected and surviving. There is a sudden need for technology in the church, and it has struck us in more ways than one. But let me remind someone here today that I can't teach you everything there is to know about technology in this one session. And praise God, we, were, we will be doing um, Zoom meetings on a weekly basis from the ladies department to help connect those that are interested in media ministry, wanting to help their churches, wanting to, to be able to learn some of these avenues. We will be hosting Zoom meetings because you can't learn it all in one session, amen. Um, I, I can't teach you all there is to know. The truth is, I don't even know all there is to know about technology. But maybe right now, um, lady, um, pastor's wife, just, you know, a saint of God, maybe you're asking yourself right now, what can I do and how can I serve? How can I fulfill the purpose of God in my life while we are in this pandemic, while we are in this lockdown situation, while we're isolated. You know, for many of you, maybe you guys were involved in a ministry before that suddenly now it almost seems impossible to fulfill because you can't actually physically go to church. But there is still needs in your church. There is still avenues in which you can reach people. And a lot of these avenues today are now used through media. Um, I can guarantee you that no matter how big or how small your church is, there is probably a media ministry need in your local church right now. Your pastor could use someone to help with live streaming, someone to help with designing an announcement or a video, um, video announcements or video content. And there's just so much more. And so many times we get caught up in the I'm too young or I don't even know how to work any of these programs or I'm too old, I'm not technology savvy and, and I, I just, I can't do that sort of thing. Um, you, you know, those things oftentimes overwhelm us, but there is no technology that is too daunting that you can't learn. Um, I, I saw a post from a pastor's wife that said, if you find yourself bored during the quarantine, pick up one of these skills. And I will put it on the screen um, so you guys can see. And many, many of these just seem like um, pictures you don't even know, can't even recognize. Um, but all of these things are avenues in which um, they're media avenues. They're um, Photoshop and, and video editing. Uh, content and um, maybe uh, uh, there's pro presenters on there as well like from um, running your AV system and all these things and in the point of that post was you know do you feel called are you stuck at home and you know don't have another way to serve well pick up one of these skills you know, um, some of these are needed right now. Some of these will be needed as soon as you we go back to um, church, I guess, as normal. And, and it will be such a blessing for your pastors, for your churches, to have an individual that has said, I'm not going to just stay still during this time of lockdown and quarantine, but I'm going to pick up a skill that I know can be used for the kingdom of God. And so take a good look at these um, different apps. We will be discussing these in our Zoom meetings. Um, but this is just one example. There are so many things that can be learned um, during this time. There are such needs in our churches today for people to pick up these skills. Um, like I said, there's video editing programs from anything from free to maybe some there's some cost involved. There's design programs. Well, why do we need design? Well, you know, right now, there the announcements and everything that your church is doing will probably be put on on Facebook or Instagram or um, be sent through WhatsApp. Well, it's you know, if you can just pick up a skill 
to design something it can be simple it can be done on a free app you know it doesn't have to be too complex but you can say hey pastor you need an announcement made i can do that um you know the, the amount of help that at that point you be giving your local church is is incredible at these times so many um, pastors are, are finding themselves in a place where they're having to learn all these things and they're having to do um, all these different skills and and things and so as if we can pick up that mantle to say you know what I may not be the best at this but I'm gonna learn because there there is an urgency to take the gospel to this world um, it is important that we are that faithful available and teachable um, you know I said there is no technology that is too daunting um, I will tell you this I when I started with media ministry, um, now I'm blessed with the opportunity to help in various capacities. But when I first started, I didn't really know what I was doing. I saw a need. I saw that there was, that there was a need in technology and media in our church. And I said, I'm going to pick up these skills. I'm going to try to figure out how how this is I made myself available and I allowed myself to be teachable and um, any person that now works with me in media ministry whether it's in the national youth department or um, in other in Bible school I find that the greatest skill a person can have is being fat being faithful available and teachable um, because these skills can be learned you're not necessarily always just born knowing these things um, but it's so important that we commit to excellence. That's the second thing that I always tell our students. Um, media ministry is a little bit of a behind the scenes kind of ministry and um, not everybody recognizes it as such, um, but that doesn't mean that it, it's any less important and we need to commit to excellence in everything that we do. The same way how we prepare for hours for a message when we're asked to speak over the pulpit, the same way that we prepare and we pray about the worship songs and the worship set that we are going to be singing during worship. In that same way, we need to dedicate the same level of excellence to our visual presentation as we labor for the kingdom. Um, let your service to the kingdom be a reflection of your worship. Let your visual presentation be a reflection of your worship. Media ministry, as I said before, can be a background ministry, but it's an important ministry. Um, and, you know, we, we need to take the visual um, presentation of media seriously, but I, that goes without saying, um, that we can't allow our attitude to be um, corrupted in the midst of that. Um, because so many times, and this happens with any ministry, you become so dedicated to the level of excellence that you can forget why you're doing it in the first place. Um, you know, yes, commit to excellence. Yes, try to do what you're doing um, to the best of your abilities, try to give the best presentation there is, but don't forget that technology is our tool. Um, we can never allow our tools to become greater than the mission. What do I mean by that? That means, you know, if you're going to do a Bible study, a live stream session, and you're trying to get all the things right, and trust me, that's good. I, I'm like that. I, I try to get all the things right. I want everything to look good. I want to have the best, you know, camera and the best program and the best everything. But if that can't be done, remember the mission is greater than the tool. The mission is to take this gospel to the people. And so however that may be, however um, you can, don't let the, the fact that maybe your technology is lesser than your neighbor's um, uh, worry you to the point that you're like, well, I can't do it because I can't do it to that level. Well, God sees your heart. God sees your intention. God sees everything that you're putting, every effort that you're putting into. He sees your attitude. And so our attitude matters how we serve the kingdom. 
Um, we're breaking ground using technology. And so when we're breaking ground using technology, we, um, it should be through that desire to reach the uttermost parts of the earth that, what, that we do what we do. Um, oftentimes, like I said, just like any other ministry, you know, we can get too focused in on being perfect in that, in that area. Um, but again, I just want to remind those out there that strive for excellence, but remember the mission and remember that technology is our tool, but the, the tool can never be greater than that mission. Our mission is to go and to reach the lost. Our mission is to connect the church. And especially right now, more than ever, technology is a tool that we can use in order to connect the church, in order for the church to not become dispersed, but unified. So let us remember that in our purpose. When we're trying to learn new skills and all these different programs, they can be difficult and they can be overwhelming. And that's why we're setting up this um, Zoom um, weekly uh, meeting so that those that are interested in learning these tools can come together, whether you know little, a lot, or nothing at all. And, but if you want to be using the kingdom in this level, come to our Zoom meeting that we will be giving more information about later. But um, come to our Zoom meeting and we'll discuss where you're at, what are your needs, and we'll try to help each other as a unified church, as unified um, sisters in Christ, um, to help each other advance the kingdom using technology um, the, way, the way it's needed right now. But, you know, we're, we're figuring out how to use programs we never thought maybe we'd use. We're using Facebook Live, and we're Zooming everywhere. <laughs> maybe you use live, um, um, uh, live streaming software, such as um, Wirecast or OBS, or maybe you find yourself making videos for, um, for children, um, using something as simple as iMovie, or maybe you're um, you know, dabbling into Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. Maybe you're learning how to use apps um, to make announcements. All these things are important. All these things matter. If you're wondering, how can I serve the church right now? How can I serve um, my, my pastor you know, and, and help them out? This is how. Pick up one of these skills. Um, learn one of these skills and and take some of that that weight off their shoulder because they're trying to cater to to the church they're trying to cater to you they're trying to you know bring the word of God so anything that we can do to be in a, of assistance this is our time to be servant leaders um, when all this is over and the church you know goes back to the way it was let's just not go back to normal because we've already broken ground, in, in new ground in technology. So, you know, we, the, many of us are, are using programs we never used before, are reaching out in ways we never thought we'd reach before. Um, and so this is us breaking new ground in technology. Let us not go back to normal the way things were before. Um, when everything calms down, when all this, you know, blows over, because it will in Jesus' name, when, when we come out the other end, let, let us take some time to cultivate what has been planted and grow our technology efforts to further impact this world and strengthen the church. Um, I wanted to share a story with you all um, before heading into some of the practical things. Um, and this is just a story that really um, has, has touched me. I've been reading a book called Jesus of Arabia. And in this book, it talks about how we read our Bible um, and just uh, ways that, that we read our Bible sometimes are so influenced by our Western culture. Um, but uh, daring us to maybe look at um, some of very familiar and popular scriptures through the lens of maybe the, maybe the culture that Jesus had um, in the Middle Eastern culture. And so I'm going to read a scripture to you guys, and it is um, a very familiar scripture. It's Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 5. And I apologize, I don't have it on the screen, but 
Um, It says simply, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. Since Jesus was coming that way, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Now, many times we read that scripture and we hear this scripture preached on the fact that Zacchaeus was a tax collector, someone um, in whom was a, seen as a collaborator with the Roman forces and which occupied that community. He was seen maybe as, as a traitor and, and the focus that oftentimes as a church we put on this scripture is that Jesus came to save sinners. Um, And we ask ourselves, maybe, is there really no other lesson that we can draw from this story? And what really interested me about this story is the writer of um, the book that I'm referencing, um, he lived in the Middle East, and he talked about how um, when he was teaching this this story to a group of Omani uh, readers encountering the story for the very first time, Um, their reaction to the story was completely different than maybe the one we had. Their reaction was a complete, um, complete disgust, and they were out, they were outraged at the fact that they said, "How could Jesus be so impudent to invite himself to another man's house? Our culture would not even dream of inviting ourselves into a neighbor's house unless we were invited by the host." Not even the Sultan of Oman has a right to do that. Only God himself could do that. And why did I read this story? Because right now we are seeing where God God himself has invited himself into our home. We have been placed in a situation where we're stuck at home and we can't leave and we can't have church as normal but the Lord himself has invited himself into our home right now and through technology we can take the God that has invited himself into our home into the homes of others there are other people out there that are stuck at home that maybe find themselves in despair and many things are trying to invite invite themselves into their home fear is trying to invite themselves into their home and and uh, you know all these uncertainties are inviting themselves into the homes of the people and but what happens when they're scrolling through their facebook page and they're seeing all these negative news and they're 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 fearful and they're worried and and all these different things but then they see a light and they see the light that is the light of god Maybe it's through a live stream. Maybe it's through, uh, you know, a devotion that you decided to start posting to encourage people. And they see a light that is the light of God inviting itself into their own home. And maybe they find themselves like these people saying, who are you to start talking about these things? And because that can happen. And maybe, maybe you're trying to share the light and maybe someone out there will actually be saying, well, who are you to say these things? or to impose your views on me but in that moment maybe they can see that maybe nothing else has the right to invite itself into their home but God can and so I share this story with you all to be an encouragement so that so that when you share and you decide to take that step of faith because it's not easy it's not easy to use um, social media to to speak about your faith in a world that is oftentimes so against it and you know it's not always comfortable to sit in front of a camera and speak to it and hoping that it will impact someone out there anywhere you know but it's the call of God right now that is calling us to this purpose, to reach out, to share the light. And so when people see the light that you are sharing, let them see the Lord himself inviting himself into 
their home. And so be encouraged. This isn't, this isn't just something that we're doing so that we can say the church is doing more things. It's something be, uh, that is greater than that. It's something that has a mission, that has a purpose. And so technology can, you know, it can, it can be good, it can be bad, all the things. But let's just look at it through the lens of it being our tool for the kingdom. Um, for those that want to be used in this area, um, like I said, we will be setting up Zoom meetings and we will be posting about them. And so I will give you more information to come um, The ladies here at the Ladies in Action page. Um, but there will be lots of practical tips if you want to learn any. Um, any programs, it'll be catered specifically to those that are watching um, in the sense that if you are saying, well, I, I need to learn how to make videos because I want to do some Sunday school videos or I want to learn how to design a little bit just be, or even if it's with free tools because I want to be able to help my, my church and my pastor make announcements to post online. You know, whatever it is specifically that you need help in, that's what we're going to target. That's what we'll focus We'll, we'll talk a lot about things such as, you know, um, color and video and design, um, all these different things. Um, but again, you um, just join the Zoom meeting when, when we have that. Um, know that you can be used. You can be used in this area. Um, don't let fear um, come in the way of you stepping out of your comfort zone to be used in this area. Don't let the thoughts of, well, you have to be young or, or you have to be skilled or you have to already know um, what you're doing. Trust me, when I started doing this, I didn't know what I was doing. I messed up a lot. Um, but you, you know, it's, it's the mission that drove me to continue trying and continue learning um, because the mission is far too great for us to just give up because we're stuck at home. Um, the mission is still there and we're still called to reach out. Um, know that God is calling you to be used at this time and maybe it is in ways that you never imagined possible. Um, but God can use you and God will use you as long as you are faithful, available, and teachable. Amen. So as we end this session, I just want to pray with each and every one of you ladies that is on here. Um, because I know that these things can be daunting. I know that maybe it can feel like, well, someone else can do it, not me. But um, let's just pray and, and pray that um, as we're stepping into these new seasons and these uncharted waters, uh, God is already breaking ground. It's him doing it. And, and so that's what we need to remember. Maybe we don't know all that there is to know about technology. Maybe it's really hard to learn. But in those moments, you ask, God, help me learn because this is something I want to do for your kingdom and to give you glory. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, Lord, right now for each and every person that has joined here on this Facebook Live, Lord. You see, Lord, the hearts of your people, Lord, to see your mission, Lord, go forward, God. You see every heart of each individual, Lord, who wants to be used for your kingdom, God. Lord, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will just have your hand upon each and every lady, Lord, who desires to be used in your kingdom in this capacity, Lord, that you will just use them Lord and help them learn God Lord allow Lord Jesus the fears Lord and the worries to go away God Lord as we persevere and push forward Lord to see greater things come Lord Jesus to see a greater revival Lord Jesus through these avenues that we never even thought we'd be using God but I pray God that your hand will be upon each and every lady God who wants to be used right now Lord in this level of ministry God Lord Jesus, that you will help them grow and learn in these capacities in this area, Lord Jesus, to strengthen our churches, to unify our churches, and to reach the lost, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, um, that is all for today. Again, we will be um, 
posting um, more about the, the Zoom meetings. I'm looking forward to them. Uh, those will be ways that we can stay connected, be practical, um, and apply a lot of these technical terms instead of you just listening to me say them on a live stream, we'll get to talk about it and you get to ask questions and all these things. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, may you be blessed. Um, be back here on the Ladies in Action page tonight for Sister Kelly's last session. Um, let us be encouraged. Um, let us be empowered at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>